forget, you can hear the full-length, longer version wherever you get your podcasts. Well, here we are. Welcome to Paul Foot, one of the most distinct, I'm going to use that word, comedians in, 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 a, in, a, in a very, very good sense. And we've just been catching up and I've said, hey, let's save this. The viewer slash listener is going to want to enjoy this. The last time we saw each other. Uh, it was at Heathrow Airport. Mm. Yes. Mm. And you were with your family, who you didn't introduce me to for obvious reasons. Oh, I'm sorry, did I know? Was that rude? No, no, no. But I think it was probably best to keep them away. You know? <laughs> no, anyway, so you... We were in... We were in the successful person's lounge. I didn't want to mention that part. Ah, that's fascinating. Not the very, very no, successful. No, we weren't in the very successful person. But the quite successful person's lounge. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the medium, the, the moderately successful. That's true. We were in the... I always think when, when, when people go are in there, they're feeling rather pleased with themselves. Some of them don't know there's a better one. That's true. Yeah, a lot of them don't know. Yeah, we're talking about the business lounge as opposed to the first class lounge. We were in the first class lounge. Were we? Yes. I thought we were in the business. We were in the first class lounge. The business lounge is upstairs. That's true. And then there's another lounge which is better than the first class lounge. Oh, I've never been in that. Oh, you must have been in there. Well, what's that The Concorde. That one? Oh, I have. Yeah, Sorry, the I Concorde have. Room, yeah. 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 But that's, not, that's where the real first class passengers are. You know there's something even higher than that? I don't think so. Yes, there is. There is a thing called... Oh, the uh, Royal Suite. The Windsor, Windsor Suite. Yeah, I mean, I will, I, you and I, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, Yeah, we will never... Well, maybe we will. You might. Yeah. Anyway, there we were, and you were heading off to Australia. You've toured Australia many times. Yeah, I don't know how many times, probably 12 times. Really? I've been to Australia something like... I don't know, 25, 30 times? Or, you know, in the last 13 years since I started going there. Because this trip was for a holiday. For a holiday. Well, I always go in January mm. because it's, uh, it's the summer there. It's winter here. I'm Got loads of, that, of friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. no, there's no, nothing much happens in January. I mean, there's no Rob Brydon podcast in January, is there? Nothing happens. Well, technically there is, but we'll gloss over that. Yeah, but there's no, not much goes on. No, not much goes on. And it's depressing. Uh, Yeah, exactly. It's horribly, horribly dreary. And we're recording this in February. And you literally got back a few days ago. Yes, uh, about four days ago. You don't find that? I'd still be discombobulated at this stage. No, I'm fine. I think it's just as long as you get enough sleep. I had lots of sleep. Right. No, I'm fine. Okay, okay. And this was a holiday, but you tour. Have you toured yet over there with the new show, which is I'm really interested to talk to you about because it's a sort of change of direction for you. Yes, well, I thought of the new show. I haven't really because I, I, I went to Australia last year, so I'll be going next year. But I did because I'm filming the show. Mm. I think I'm allowed to say that. I hope so. Anyway, mm. because I'm filming it, I did a practice in Australia. But I couldn't charge any money because of uh, because I wasn't on a work visa, because I was on a tourist <laughs> visa. And we even said to them, couldn't I just raise some money for charity? And they said, no. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they, well, you, and you don't want to mess with the Aussies. Was I saying to you, bef- I think before we filmed, before we started, um, this is just apropos of nothing, about me getting bitten by the spider before... I went to Australia. Yeah, you said you were bitten by a spider in Wandsworth or something. In Twickenham. Twickenham. At home in the garden. It was in a it was it was hiding in a in a boxing glove that I went to try and have a little sparring thing with one of my kids. And I went, ah. And I, this spider came out and my hand, my finger, was there was blood and it was red. Yes. Now you made the point, well, we're okay, aren't we, in Britain, really? 99.99%. Yeah, but you see... So enough, enough for you to worry about it. Well, yeah, would, what would you have done if knowing you're about to get on a flight all the way to Auckland? I would have ignored the fact that I'd been bitten by a harmless spider in Twickenham. Would you really, though? And I, I suppose I'd have questioned what I was doing in your garden. <laughs> apart, from, <laughs> apart from that... I'm putting, and why you were putting on those boxing gloves. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. suppose it's convenient for the airport, so I suppose it... 
wouldn't really. Oh, so I wouldn't have minded. It wouldn't have worried you. So you don't no. have the sort of mind that would have gone, oh, it'll be just my luck. It'll turn out to be a poisonous black widow. It's funny. I think people worry about different things, don't they? And I've a hundred percent. There's been things I've always worried about, but I've never been health. I've never thought. You've never worried about health. Oh no, I mean obviously there's been some. I'm not worrying. I mean obviously there's been some things that have happened where I thought I better get a test on that. What's that yeah. about or something? But I've never been one of those people who thinks, oh, what about if the doctor says, oh, really? oh, oh, this. What what about if this were something? Oh my God. Really. I've always just thought. I can just feel I was built to last. Oh, see, no, no, I would, I am that person. Yes. I am that person. So what do you worry about? I don't worry about very much nowadays, and in a way, which is what my new show is about. So I don't worry about the spider, that's the point I wouldn't worry so about. So you would it. have gone on... I've sometimes invited a, a, a spider bite. Oh. One time I was in the shower, because I love spiders, so I, I know, but it, it was going to get washed down the sink. So I put it on my... I wasn't washing my hair. You are not So I put serious. it on my head. You are no, you in, didn't. And it's walking around my head. And I'll tell you... And then it did actually bite me on the forehead. But I'll tell you this story. <laughs> this story will really scare you. This was the first time I went to Australia. So oh. I'm performing in Australia in, in this uh, theatre and it's all going well. And then suddenly the audience, they're just not laughing as much and they yeah. don't seem to be really concentrating on me. I'm thinking, what's going on, you know? So I say, why are you not laughing? Why are you not laughing? Well, you know, I know it's... I mean, I mean, it, there was something... <laughs> we all hope we never in our, in our time on stage have to ask that question. <laughs> no, but we've all had a time when we've, you've lost a crowd or you feel you lost a crowd. Yes. It wasn't like that. I hadn't lost a crowd. Something wasn't right. So I said, what's wrong? And they said, there's this spider, and everyone was really nervous of it, this spider on the, near the stage, I think. So then I said, okay, is it, can I check, is it a poisonous spider? Because I know there are those in Australia. They're not really in Melbourne. And uh, someone said, no, it's not a poisonous one, but just a lot of people don't like spiders, they're phobic of it, and they're not enjoying the show. So I said, look, I'll pick it up and put it out of the window. So I uh, picked it up and put it out of the window, and I carried on with the show, and it all went well. Oh, I know where this is going. Can you guess? Tingling in the hand? Yeah, well, what, no, it wasn't. Oh, no, it's not that. Uh -huh. What it was is that when I went to put it out of the window, I hadn't actually put it out of the window <laughs> because it oh, somehow no. was still there. Anyway, so as I'm performing, I can feel something oh, no, kidding. going up my arm. And then as I'm carrying on with the performance, I could feel it going uh, oh. up and down inside my no. shirt. No, no. But no one ever knew. And I just carried on and they were all happy, laughing away. Not worried about spider, enjoying the jokes. And I said, thank you very much, good night. And I came off and I think I met the audience. I think I got rid of it before that put it somewhere. No one ever knew. Wow, so you, you really do like spiders. What, the the yes, one that you put I in your head, them. was that in Britain or Australia? And that was in Britain. Yeah, okay. And I've got, oh, I love tarantulas. And I've got a dream which could never really happen because they're very fragile tarantulas. They can get easily I'm glad. get damaged. Good. But I've got a dream. I'd love to sit in like a pit and have tarantulas all over me. There's a TV show that... Uh, oh, yes. There is a television show and you get paid and hopefully you'd be voted out early and yes. then you just sit by the pool. <laughs> yeah, yes. You'd like that, would you? Yeah, I'd love to... Um, yeah, I'd love... I love tarantulas. I'd love to be with a load of tarantulas. What is it about them that you like? I find them so beautiful. I love their eight legs and I love the hairs on their legs and their beautiful faces. I find them fascinating creatures. Do you have any pets? No. Yeah. I'd like to, but I'm always travelling. You are, aren't you? Yeah, mm. you're, you're always out and about. Where did you go to university? What did you read? I went to Oxford and I read maths. Oh, you clever, clever person. You did maths? Yeah, I find comedians that did maths or science or engineering very interesting. Uh, lots, lots of them have, actually. Lots of comedians have done maths. Is that true? I, I think I, so. I think of Rowan Atkinson doing engineering, yes. and I think you have a different type of comedic brain that uh, does it rely more on logic and structure more than feeling, or is that a bit glib? I don't know, really. I think there is, uh, even now when I, uh, I'm writing, or I write with someone else, but when I'm writing, there's a sort of logic to it. But there's obviously a madness to it all as well. It's a mixture. Mm. So um, I don't... 
I mean, people often ask me about maths. And sometimes I'm even introduced as mathematician or something. But it's just something I did at university. I can barely remember it. Yes, but I think that's because people that can't do maths, and I'm one of them, it is a mystery. It, it is, it's like, hey, can you speak Russian? No, I can't. Not even the slightest. If, if you don't have a maths brain, I yeah. think... Which is why this this government thing, you know, to make everybody do maths as soon as I I think is a, is is a crazy idea. You went to do maths at Oxford. Which college were you at? Merton. In fact, I was uh, a year above uh, someone else who was also at Merton College, Oxford, who I met a few times. One of the great prime ministers of the UK, Liz Truss. Oh, <laughs> she was at Merton College as oh, well. Let's enjoy this for a moment. You were there, and yeah. she's she's older than she you. Was, she's younger than me. She's younger one year you. below me. And I didn't know her very well, but I would see her sometimes at parties. I knew her reasonably well to have a conversation with. And she'd be at the party, and she'd have a radical idea for how the party could be better, yes. and they'd implement it, and then it would all turn to poo. But, of course, the devastating thing is, well, the funny thing is, obviously I never kept up with her. I didn't know her that well. But some people with a f- superficial mind might say, well, so Sharon didn't keep up with that person from university. She's going to become the next prime minister. There'd be people who'd think that, wouldn't they? Yes. They'd think, oh, if only I'd kept up. I wouldn't be surprised if perhaps when she became prime minister, a few people wrote in saying, oh, do you remember me from, you know, as yeah. people do. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. she was only there for 49 days. So it didn't, didn't really matter in the end, did it? Did she stand out at university? No. But Oxford, I would imagine, and Cambridge, it's full of exceptional people, is it not? Well, uh, not everyone. I mean, they're just but people. I would say, well, I know this is what people who go there say. Muggins didn't go there. You, you, you're an exceptional person in, in so many ways. Even within the world of comedy, you stand out. You know, there, there aren't many Paul Foots. Yes. There are lots of X, Y or Z type of comedians. They can be and they're all perfectly good, but quite interchangeable. You're not really interchangeable with anybody, are you? Not really, I suppose not. And even when I started, people said... I was just doing my own thing. I wasn't like anyone, really. I was just sort of doing... When I start, I started at university, yeah. and I didn't even understand my own genre. Yeah. I literally did a gig once because I thought it'd be nice to do one. I, it was only ever going to be a one-off. I said, it'll be a one-off. I'm going to become an, either accountant or actuary, but I'll be able to say I've been on stage one time. That was your thinking. And, I, and people said, you're funny, and I thought... But I didn't understand that comedians basically prepare something and you go on and do it. So I sort of came on and just said, oh, can anyone name a fruit? And sort of improvised from what they said. And and at the end of it, it went quite well. It didn't go really well. Yeah. It didn't go badly either. It just went all right. But I, do, I knew immediately that was going to be my career, just immediately. In that moment? In that moment, immediately. And prior to going up on that stage, you were going to be an accountant or, or an actuary. actuary? And this was just a one-off thing. I never, ever thought this was ever something I'd ever do again. But I just, and I thought, right, I'm 19 years old. And um, in fact, I'm coming up to my 31st comedy birthday in a couple of days' time. Yeah. Uh, so that was. So, what was that feeling then? Can you describe that feeling that led you to say to yourself, this is what I'm going to do? What was that feeling? It was just, uh, I suppose, that feeling of perhaps it, people had mentioned it when I was a teenager, said, oh, what do you want to do? You know, and I, I didn't really know. And lots of people, of course, go through life not knowing what they want to do. Mm. And, never, and I just thought immediately thought, that's what I want to do. So I knew I was 19 years old and I'd worked out what I wanted to do. I thought, well, that's, that's good because that's quite a big thing to have well, worked I think out. It's, um, I think you're, personally, I think you're at an advantage if you have a passion and a thing that you love and a thing that you want to do. So you leave, you, you get your degree. Yes. How do you do? Do you do well? Uh, not really. Well, I did well at the end of my first year. I did very well. Yeah. But then I didn't do any work for the second year because I was devoted to comedy then. Wow. And then the thing about maths is it builds on itself. So then in the third year I did quite a lot of work, but it was too late really. Yeah. Because I didn't yeah. know, have the second year. So I got a 2-2 in the end. Okay. And, I, and in a way I would have left and just gone straight into comedy. But it would have been a hell of a thing. I couldn't bring myself to say to my family and my grandmother and all these people, my grandmother, who we're filming, of course, in Fulham, yeah? Mm -hmm. And she, I felt I'll probably walk over afterwards because she used to live just across the road. 
in, in moved there in uh, where would it, it would have been um, just in in the war I think or right. just before the war yeah moved there and when it was a very working class place to live mm-hmm. in a house that's now worth probably worth God knows how much yeah. And, you know, and all of that stuff she'd been through and all poverty, she was born in poverty in Acton and all that stuff. And then they were so excited, our grandson's going to university, he's going to Oxford to do maths. I couldn't say to my those people, oh, I'm going to give up my maths degree and go around pubs <laughs> performing for free, doing open spots yeah. with a view to maybe, if it goes well, after a couple of years I might get a few... 10-minute paid spots for £25. I couldn't say that. But you, when you'd done the degree and you came out of university, you made no effort then to pursue a career related to maths. You went straight into comedy? Yes, basically I did. Who were yes. the comedians that were also starting out that you would always find yourself on bills with? Tony Law. Yeah. And he was a bit like, you know, he was doing something a bit like me. He was unusual. Mm. Noel Fielding. Oh, no. I think he, perhaps he was a little bit more established than me. He'd been doing it a couple of years more. But we even went on a tour together. I think he was the headliner and I was the support act. That wasn't you. Was Lee on that tour? Was Lee Mack on that tour? I don't Lee know. Lee did a tour once I with did do, Noel. I did do something with Lee Mack. Mm-hmm. I think I did do a tour with him or something. Or no, maybe not. We did lots of gigs together. We were in the cars together a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I remember Ross Noble, yeah. when I was really struggling, because I started in 96, basically, and then everything went really well. Within a year, I was on Channel 4 doing television. I was just thinking, wow, it's all just falling into place. And then I went into a kind of... Uh, it went really well in the night, but I was... It was the wrong time in a way, mm. because I was doing my sort of comedy, which was not suited for comedy clubs. And I was very successful at all these awards I won and stuff. But what they meant is I get all these bookings in these comedy clubs and it would go so badly. Yeah. And, it, and I would always be on in that slot. It was they'd put a f- first half was solid 20 minutes, someone doing something. And then I'd be in that middle slot where then someone could come on afterwards and rescue and it apologize and then and i'd had so many and i was usually the driver and then and then i'd have to watch the one after me go if so well doing very obvious kind of jokes you yes. know and then then especially I'd, in clubs you know where if, if you're playing someone like jonglers and you've got stag groups in hell oh, yeah. and you, so it's just the kind of not lowest common denominator but sort of more generic stuff that they can easily oh, get a handle of yeah and then i'd have to sit there with the, the one who'd gone down ever so well at the end so you can't argue with that because yeah. i had gone down badly yeah. and they had gone well and they'd be saying you need to sort your act out paul you know i mean you get some were jokes about whatever it was. Not all of them were. <laughs> Some of them were really supportive. I remember uh, Ross Noble once when I was really low and I said, I just think I'm going to give up. I said, I've been doing this for now several years. And to see, it was 13 years that time when it went really badly before then suddenly everything went really well. But well, of course, so you start, hang on then, so you started well, you said you had about a year and you're winning awards and That's everything. That's 97. And then you had a 13-year period? Yes. Because because in 97, I had won all these awards, but I did all these clubs. And there wasn't the stuff there is now. Nowadays, so many acts go touring. Yeah. People didn't tour then mm. in those days unless they were very big names. And also there weren't the sort of, for want of a better word, the trendy sort of cabaret clubs yeah. and the places where people... The whole zeitgeist has changed now. Mm. People want something different and all, it's completely different. So there was nowhere for me to really go. And so I was doing all these um, clubs and it was going so badly. I remember doing um, a thing in late 1997, Robin Ince. So I'd had a terrible, torrid time for about four months. It was awful. Uh, perhaps once a month I'd have a geek that reminded me why I was doing it. It would all fall into place and it was like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm funny, it's just a natural funniness. And the other times would be horrendous. Anyway, after this torrid time, Robin, so it was at the Institute of Contemporary Arts mm. in London. He said, oh, it was some weird night and we'd like to, I'd like to come along. And I remember thinking, right, I could do something a bit different here. This is going to be... And I remember doing something when I... I can't remember what it was now, but I had this cardigan. And I said, you must always wear a cardigan that is very smart. It must be smart. I can't remember. It was just going on about the cardigan. 
and there was no real content to it. It was quite sort of weird and everyone was laughing and it wasn't perfect. Of course it wasn't. But it was like that made me think, this is what I... C if, if these places were here yeah. every night of the week, this <laughs> is what I could be working on. This is what I could be honing. Yeah. You just but, had to find your audience because, so just, because your audience, it's not, there's just, it's not the, the necessarily the comedy club audience let's talk then about the uh, the, the new show because this sounds this sounds really interesting the the impression i get and from what i've read and everything is that and it's always interesting when you hear this oh this is different to his other stuff this is a new direction T tell me about it well it's a show um yeah it is different because i've never done a show that was in any way autobiographical or any way personal it's a show really about how i had years and years of terrible depression right. and about how at a particular moment on the 20th of March 2022 it was, it all just disappeared, all of the depression. And like that? Like that. And that's really what it's about. I'd never talked about... So it's quite... It's a very different show. One, because no one even... Most of my audience didn't know about that depression. It was not something I'd even spoken about. In fact, I don't think I, in a way, before my comedy was an escape mm. from it. Mm. And so I would, that's one of the reasons I think why I would go on all these surreal flights of fantasy about sort of stupid things. It was, I didn't want to talk about my actual life. So this is, uh, it's, um, so I talk about the depression, obviously in a funny way. I've, but what obviously... form did your depression take? Uh, it was, it was, it was technically speaking not depression. It was technically speaking anxiety, but anxiety that was so great that it would have an effect that would then cause me to get depressed. So technically, if you know, if you read the um, psychiatrist sort of report, it was the anxiety. So I would be very anxious about what. Uh, it, it, it could be anything. So it could be. Um, most of the time it would be quite normal, but it could be some small thing someone said and then I'd storm out of a party or whatever it was. Oh, right. Then I'd get depressed because I'd, you know... But you'd, you'd take offence at something somebody might, had said. Yeah, it might take offence. feel slighted. Or be difficult, uh, or just be, be, you know, someone might say, oh, I've, I don't know, I was very angry. I had so much angry, but not all the time, but, yeah. you know, sometimes it'd be at a party and someone would say, oh, well, I'm going through a marriage breakup or something, I'd say, oh, well, so what, you live in a big house and who cares? And Or something, I'd be sort of like, I wouldn't want to hear what they've got to say and I'd say, I've had much worse things happen in my life and I'd be all angry and depressed about it. I'd be, ang you know, I'd be anxious but that would, of course, make me depressed because I don't think, oh, my God, I've just said that to these people at this party, whatever it was. Mm. So it was... Um, so, yeah, so I talk about that. I obviously find a funny way to talk. I find a funny way to talk about all the anger because that was the key to it, it was anger. And, um, and then I talk about this amazing moment and sort of dissect it all. So what, 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 what's, what, what's the show called? The show's called Dissolve. And, uh, Is there a reason for that title? It's called Dissolve because it was on that moment that uh, in the 2022 that sort of everything kind of dissolved away. I mean, well, it would make sense when you see wow. the show, but it was like a moment of dissolving everything, just dissolving all the problems, disappearing. So obviously, I, I imagine you don't want to give things away here, but... So what can you tell me about how it how it changed like well, that? Well, I can I can't really I, I I can't really tell you much. I can oh. tell you that it's not Jesus or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we we'll rule things out then by which was not Jesus. It's not you know because some okay. people might think oh no is it going to be we're going to go and then we're going to hear all about oh this is Jesus healed me or something. Right. I do have some comedy about Jesus in it about if Jesus was uh, had been a plumber. Oh yes yes yes. So I've got some and I've got the surreal flights of fantasy that. Flights of fancy yes. that people have um, got, you know, that they love me for. You know, yes. I thought I've got stupid stuff about. King. So you can't tell me then here now because it would spoil the show. For, you don't want to give it away because I'm very curious what this this thing that happened on this specific date. 
No, it was a specific date at a specific time. All right, okay. Four fifty-nine p.m. So I can't really, but it, I, it's okay. not. In fact, it, it's difficult to explain what it was. But in the show, I kind of sort of explain what okay. it was. It takes a while to sort of explain. I very much respect, although it's frustrating, the fact that you won't tell me us what happened. But it is very much making me want to go and see the show, which I suppose is the idea. Yes, and I'm, you know, I'm. I'm on tour at the moment. And until when? I think it's till the 17th of May. So how does that then affect you going forward? Because presumably the next show can't be telling this story again. So the next show will perhaps be more like the old shows, but with a new I mean, attitude. I mean, it might, yeah, it'd probably be like the old shows with a new attitude or I find some other aspect to talk about or something to... But you're right. I mean, in many ways, I've got in serious difficulties now <laughs> because I don't know what, what, how I'm going to follow that. But as one of the effects of this is that I live much more now in the present rather than worrying about stuff. Yeah. I suppose in many ways I don't need to worry about what the next show is going to be like. Just doing this one. This new state then has been maintained for, for how long? 22 months, I suppose it is. Okay. 23 months. And you presumably then you'll take this to your beloved Australia. I will, uh, yes, I hope so, next year. Yeah, oh, brilliant, brilliant. Really nice to talk to you properly, rather than in an airport lounge. Yes, it was ever so brief. You were on your way to the plane anyway. Hey, thanks so much. I'm going to reach over. Yes. And I'm going to shake your hand. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Rob. Now, I don't want to shock you with unexpected news, but that is the end of this very long series for now. Thank you for listening to me and all my wonderful guests. We're going to take a short break, but we will be back with you again very soon. If you can't wait for that, and who could blame you, do keep an eye out for our best of the series compilations. Until then, be well. <laughs>